the solenoid and the toroid are, are two pieces of equipment which actually actually produce a uniform magnetic field okay so so they are magnetic field generators they produce a uniform magnetic field both of them right the difference is that the solenoid is a, a straight line device while the toroid is a circular device okay so uh, so so the the fields produced fields produced can be calculated by using the ampere's law can be calculated by using the ampere's law by using the ampere's law right fine now we first discuss the solenoid so we first discuss the solenoid now this is what a solenoid looks like in real life right so so it has got a circular tube over which you have you have wound the wires right and and this lug this is the this is the nut through which you actually feed the current to it okay so 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 this may be connected to the wire this also may get connected to a wire and the ends of the wires they'll be connected to say a battery and that's how it looks okay <clears throat> now what happens as this current goes on okay so so schematically it will look something like that right so so let's say this end is connected to a positive positive terminal of the battery and it goes like that fine so now if you if you look at it from a into the solenoid what will be the direction of the current that you'll see the direction of the current that you'll see will be to your right okay this is to your right and this is to your left if you if you're looking at the center fine so it'll it'll kind of go from your right towards your left okay so so if you if you're looking looking like that and so you'll find that through your right the current goes like that and and to your it goes to your left so that is a counter clockwise direction right that is a counter clockwise direction is not to a person who's looking from here from here it will be it will be a clockwise direction is not it will be a clockwise direction because to his left okay from his left the current is going up right right from this wire is going up is not from this wire is going up and here here at the top it is going from his left to the right right so left to the right and then it is coming down like that is that so that is a clockwise when when you see from here right okay <clears throat> fine now we are discussing a long solenoid a long solenoid produces a uniform field it produces a uniform field and what do we mean by a uniform field and what do we mean by a long solenoid by long we mean that that the the length of the solenoid length of the solenoid
is 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 large compared to its radius right compared to its radius do we see that compared to its radius the length is large okay it's it's long now if you look at it if, if say i look at it looking from this direction looking from this direction you will find and applying the right hand rule that means if i if i curl the fingers of my hand right hand like that then my thumb points in the right the, the the right thumb points in the direction of the field so right thumb will point something like that right that means out of the screen it will point out of the screen isn't it now if it points out of the screen that means due to due to one of the coils say say, say i'm drawing one of the coils here okay so one of the coils okay i am drawing it in the same sense as as this figure is drawn i am drawing it in the same sense as this figure is drawn that means the 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 right part of the coil is towards you and the left part is is away from you right so so it will have a field in this direction right it will have a field in this direction so the field enters like that it it enters like that and 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 exits like that right so the field is something like this okay is something like that not only one there'll be there'll be many field strands that will be like that right so it goes like that now this and the other ring right the other other coil that is behind this and the other which is behind this and the other which is behind this i i mean i'm talking about all these coils their their whole 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 superposition will lead to a field that is pretty uniform over the length of the solenoid right so so if this is this is the and and looking up if you if you if you make a cut section here right if if you cut it here then you find the current going in from from the coils that are above you and the current will be coming out from the coils which are below you do you see that okay from the above see the current has gone gone in this direction current has gone in this direction so here and if i if i make a cut right obviously you might you might say that the current itself will stop them i'm not talking about that you just try to make an imaginary cut okay if you do that imaginary cut what happens you will see that through the coils that are above you the current is going into the into the screen and all the all the all the coils that are below you the current is coming out of the screen right so how do we how do i how do i represent it i represent it like a wire here right and another wire here right another wire here and say say obviously not square they are round but i am just making them square right right like that and and for each wire that is going in there is something that is coming out right like that okay so so for each wire that is going in i represent it as a cross isn't it 
by a cross. Right? So these represent the current going in while the dots here will represent the current coming out of, of the screen. Coming out of the screen. Right? And the field due to this, the field due to due to this, maybe I, I should have shifted it slightly below. So so the field due to this should look something like this. Okay. Okay. So so the so the field will be will be kind of this. It it goes straight. It remains uniform in the central portion, almost straight, right? And that's why we require a long solenoid. That's why we require a long solenoid. So, So it goes all the way like that and kind of joins it here right it goes like that and comes all the way like this it joins it here and similarly And similarly, okay. And you you may say that something in between might be going going straight, okay. So. So those which are which are in between, they'll they'll be moving straight. Fine. So so there are also lines like this that come from eternity and, and go like that, right? And the direction of the field is this, right? Is this? Is that, right? Now, now the, the lines these, these these should be made made equidistant because otherwise it will not represent a, a uniform magnetic field because the distance between the, the field lines they represent the magnitude we have seen that in electrostatics right now now how do I calculate the field that will be within this so so what I do is what I do is is I take take an Amperian loop like that okay an Amperian loop like this okay And let us traverse it in this direction. Okay. Now let the solenoid be such that n is equal to to the number of of number of turns. per unit length 
Now, the num n is the number of turns per unit length, and, and, and I have taken an Amperian loop of, of say, say this length being, say, say B. And this being, say, A. Okay? Now, that is n, n, n number of turns per unit length. N is the number of turns per unit length. And, and we, we find that if it is a long solenoid, the electric field inside is pretty uniform. Let us say, let that value of the field be B, right? This is B. Obviously, obviously these lines, they'll, they'll go there and, and kind of curl like that, okay? They'll curl like that, fine? Okay, but, but I'm interested here. Now, in this region, the, elect the magnetic field just outside the, the, the wires, the magnetic fields due to them try to cancel each other. Okay, so just outside the solenoid, the field is zero. Just almost zero. Just outside the solenoid, the field is, the field is almost zero. The field is almost zero, right? Within the solenoid, within the solenoid the field is the field is uniform and has a magnitude b say okay let us say it is B. Okay. Now I would like to traverse this Amperian loop and try to find out apply the uh, apply the Ampere circuit law. Fine. So so by Amperes uh, and I, I should say that the Amperian Amperian loop. is rectangular is rectangular and is rectangular and is of length they are pretty meaningless the lengths and breadth b and width a okay fine now now let, let us do that and let's try to see the direction of the current so we had said we'll take that direction of the current as positive which will point in the direction of our right thumb when we curl our right the fingers of the right hand in the direction of the of the uh, in the direction in which you traverse the loop so i'm traversing it clockwise so if i put the fingers of my right hand to, to wrap around like this in a clockwise fashion, you'll find that your the the, the right hand thumb that will point into the into the into the paper or the screen, and and our current that is that is directed there, so that will be taken as a positive current, right? Now what happens? Let us let us try to move from A to B, right? So so we have we have around this loop okay around this loop the b dot dl as mu naught into i enclosed into i enclosed now what is is b dot dl first of all right so b dot dl is nothing but but a b c d it, it goes from a to b and call these e and f so it is nothing but a to b b dot dl right 
plus b to c gain b dot dl plus but but b to c is divided into b to e and then plus e to c okay b dot dl plus c d okay i'm sorry plus b dot dl c d plus b dot dl df plus b dot dl fa we have reached where we had started so that is one full loop right that is equal to mu naught into whatever is the i enclosed now what is i enclosed each of these these turns is carrying a current of i and how many turns are enclosed within this this loop that is of length this you understand it, it is it is this which is within this whatever is the current enclosed is the total current now what is the total number of loops that is there number of turns it is it is n number of turns per unit length into the length itself because because whatever is there within this length b okay since it's a rectangle that is the total number of turns that is enclosed so n into b is the number of turns into the length so that is total number of turns and each turn is carrying a current of i so this is the total current enclosed within the loop right now let us try to try to calculate these six integrals so in the first one in a to b i have my b as zero so so it's kind of o dot bl fine and so is the case for b to e is it not so plus b to e it's again a vector like that now from e to c i i come to this from e to c there is there is a non vanishing b there is a non zero b but it's it is perpendicular to dl right so so plus e to c it is b into dl into cos 90 you see that now from here to there cd I, i'm i'm computing this so for cd it is it is b into dl into b into dl into cos 0 okay where b is is constant pretty constant all over cd right plus i am calculating this df okay so df so plus so there is a b there is a non vanishing dl but there the angle is cos 90 and outside from f to a from f to a b itself is zero there is a dl the angle angle since since it is zero what to talk of angle right so so it is kind of o dot dl right now that is equal to okay so so we are calculating from here these six integrals don't don't get mixed up okay that is equal to mu naught i mu naught n b i i'm sorry that is mu naught n b i right now let us try to see how many of these terms are non vanishing so so this this term is 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 zero right so this is zero 
this is zero this is zero this survives this is zero because cos 90 is zero here two cos 90 is zero and this is zero so there is only one term that remains right that is b real cos zero cos zero is one b is a constant so b tends to come out of the integral so it becomes b integral dl is equal to mu naught n b i and integral dl is what for for c d the integral is is b right for for, for c d let's try to see for c d the total length is is the same as the length of the opposite side which is b because it's a rectangle right so so that is so b into b is equal to mu naught n b i and it cancels so we get the value of b as the magnitude of b as mu naught n i now n is the number of turns per unit length It is the number of turns per unit length and don't confuse it with the total number of turns right the total number of turns will be n into capital L where where L is the total length of the solenoid understand we get the point yes yeah n into capital L is the total number of turns now this is a uh, this is a beautiful application of the ampere's law in finding out a field right and that is the reason in for symmetrical for symmetrical kind of things that's why the ampere's law comes into play in the same manner as in the same manner as gauss's law also comes into play for the symmetrical situations do we get the point so so so, so this is the field due to a solenoid. Fine. The same thing. You you try try applying the Amperian loop like that. So we traverse it in the other direction, or you can also traverse it in the same direction and keep that I enclosed or maybe. You can do that. You can do that, but you know there'll be uh, I enclosed will be negative. But the b dot dl for this portion. See, uh, your question is, what if I traverse the Amperian loop below, and in the same direction, right? In the same sense. Mm -hmm. So, say, the Amperian loop is like that. Correct. So, so what happens now? Let us say you say I'll I'll go like that. So for 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 the uh, let me let me name this P Q R S P U and P. Fine. Now when you are calculating this because I know that this is non-vanishing Q R is non-vanishing R S is non-vanishing S G is non-vanishing T U is non-vanishing U P is non-vanishing. So I am even otherwise left with this right only only with this the length pq right now what happens now what happens integral pq so so what i'm saying is integral b dot dl reduces to integral pq only we saw the other five terms they vanish so so this is equal to integral pq b dot dl and that is equal to minus mu naught okay not not minus mu naught mu naught into that is equal to to mu naught into minus of n b i right n b i correct because because i again assume this length to be b okay now see b dot dl for this b dot dl for this is like what i'm traversing like this b is in the opposite direction so let me show you you are moving like that and your b is in the opposite direction so it is something like that 
so what will be the value of b this is b this is dl and this will happen at all points right so b dot dl itself here will become negative so it implies that that b dl cos 180 degrees from p to q is equal to 180 degrees is equal to minus mu naught n b i cos it is minus 1 b is a constant so so you'll say that it comes out of the comes out of the of the bracket so it, it says minus b and dl is equal to minus mu naught n b n b i and and the negatives cancel and dl becomes b so so it it eventually becomes minus uh, negatives cancel so so why write it okay the negatives have already cancelled so they have they have cancelled here right so so what am i left with b into b is equal to mu naught n b i so that so that b is equal to mu naught n i do you see that and, and that is that is something that that is identical to what you obtained here right this correct 